for six months. All I did was just make glass and at the end of the day just throw it in the trash can for six months because I couldn't sell anything. And I and I thought they might, you know, just finally just give up on me. It wasn't good enough. It was either too thick, too thin, it wouldn't fit the patterns, and you can't go back in and reheat it. You just couldn't do it. You know, you just it wasn't sellable. And and I and I knew, you know, what was sellable and what was just throwaway. And I went to my supervisor and told him, hey, I've been here three months now. And he goes, don't worry about it. We know it takes time. You're working every day. Give me eight hours of practice. And then um, after about six months, that's when I made the first taco bell. And I think I took about 20 pictures of it and so proud of it. <laughs> I've got tubes out there over 30 years old that are still burning them when I first made. You go around the country and you go walk in a neon shop back in the 80s and they would just stop working. And they wouldn't show you anything. They'd turn the fires off until you left and they turned turn the fires back on. And I think it was just handed down father to son in such a unique art. And at the time then, it was such a high demand for people and they could name their own price and work the many hours they wanted to work and they could get a job anywhere in the United States that they wanted to work in. So basically we get four foot sticks and then we would just like take our glass and we just heat it up and we just look at the pattern and then just trying to find the best place to start and just heat the glass all the way around to the patterns. And everything's done in the air. Everything's done in the air. You do it in the air, you got a visual of what your pattern is. And then once you lay at the table, you can make about two seconds of adjustments and that's about it. And that was the hardest thing to know and how much I got to do here in the air and I get to the table, how much more can I, can I work with? But you have to have that mental picture and that was the hardest thing probably to get the idea from here to here. When I first saw the guy do it, it looked so easy. I, I can do that, all he's doing is heating that glass up and bending it around this pattern. But then when I got a hold of it, oh, it just, it's, it's precise. You have to have the right temperature of the flames. You have to take the glass out at the right time. If not, it's too hot, it's too cold. You have to learn that exactly. And it was very, very aggravating. I wanted to quit. Six months into it, I was ready to throw a piece of glass against the wall, anything, because I was so mad, because it was just so hard. And it looked so easy. I watched films and stuff, and I was like, oh, okay. But it's, it's totally different when you get it. It's like having a piece of metal, and then it goes to a spaghetti noodle, and you have to be able to control it until you get to your pattern. Neon in general is a dying art. You can ask anybody in the trade, they'll tell you the same thing. The youngest guy I know in the medium right now is about 40. It's gonna come back because there's no better light form out there than neon. LEDs have tried, and at one time for about three or four years, they thought that they're gonna to have to, you know, an LED product look just like neon but uh, they'll never be able to make it last as long as neon because it's just diodes versus a gas tube. It's still a job to me. I've been doing it for 30 years now. And like anything else, you know, it, it, it's a job. You know, I come in and I don't really look at, well, I'm gonna be making this today, that today. I come in, I just take care of my customers. I might have a script job like this to do. I may have a border job, which is just straight tubing to do or a bunch of repairs. To me, it's just, you know, it's my craft. It's what I do. I enjoy having my own shop working. I love it. Oh yeah, I absolutely love it. Yeah, I feel honored to come in every day and have my own business and be able to 
to still work this craft, which I, which I very enjoy doing. And my customers are keeping me busy doing it. So um, I got about another 10 years ago. So uh, hopefully I'll be, I'll be here doing the craft and hopefully I'll pass it on to, if not my daughter, Kara, somebody else at some time, because I feel like I need to pass my craft on, you know, to make my whole 30 years worthwhile. If you find something that you want to pursue, um, put the time, put the effort into it, and it'll be rewarding. And I think that's with anything, because this was most one of the aggravated arts I've ever tried to accomplish. Um, the medium of bending glass is very, very stressful. <laughs> and you can ask anybody that's, that's tried to do it, and more, about one out of 10 stay with it. And what I would tell people out there, if we're trying to, you know, master something, no matter what it is, just put the time, put the effort into it, and give it your best shot. And, then, and I think it'll pay off. You have to strive for excellence and hope you fall somewhere that's going to be acceptable.